Welcome back everyone, I am Zadian, this is Kerbal Space Program, and today, today in history, no, uh, today in Kerbal Space Program, what we're going to be doing is building a, our first airplane. I know, exciting, right? I'm excited. You should be excited too. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a short episode, and I apologize for that ahead of time. Uh, before we get started, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the support on the first episode. It was amazing. Uh, I hadn't posted on anything on YouTube for uh, several months, and uh, even though it wasn't, a, it wasn't like a staggering amount of views, I got 30 views. I'm happy about that. I'm happy about that. And and uh, the comments were uh, very supportive. I, I enjoyed reading the, uh, the comments that were in there. I appreciate it. I got over 100 subscribers now, which is a big deal for me. I've been floating at that 99 area. Every time I'd seem to get 100, it would drop back down to 99. And uh, yeah, so I'm super duper, super uber, uber duper excited about the fact that I finally hit over the 100 mark. As a matter of fact, there is a person I'm going to shout them out. That'd be Donut Camby, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, and R158. You too were 100 and 101, and I cannot thank you enough. Thank you guys so much for, again, subscribing to a brand, um, to what is essentially to you a brand new channel and something that uh, you guys obviously must have liked the first episode. Really do appreciate it. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I do uh, kiss the ass of my audience because it makes me feel wonderful. So again, you two guys, thank you so much. Or girls, I don't know. Uh, but thank you guys. Uh, thank you all so much. I really do appreciate it. Now, back to the episode. Uh, what we're doing today is again, we're building our first airplane. We are just, this is going to be a test flight. We haven't, um, we're not gonna be doing any science, uh, with it just yet. I just, it's basically a proof of concept and basically just to prove that I'm not going to kill whoever I throw in there. And, uh, as you can see, this is post commentary, uh, because building process is quite, uh, quite long. So, uh, yeah, right now, um, I'm trying an over, uh, over under, geez, I learned how to speak English in the first grade. Uh, trying to do an over wing instead of just a mid body wing. It's not. Uh, as you can see, I'm having some problems with the uh, the, uh, the the weight, the center of mass versus the, the center of lift. Clearly, it's in the very back, which we don't want. So uh, I switch over to a swept wing. Uh, trying to uh, get that orientated the right way. So this is why I do post commentary on these guys because it's. Uh, Commentary while I'm doing is terrible. Uh, so yeah, try to move those forward as far as possible. And it, eventually, the, the the whole plane is going to look a little funky. And that's because the wing is so far forward. But that's because I need tail wings. And yeah, the tails, those, they make, they move the, the center of lift so far back. It's ridiculous. <clears throat> I, again, I'm not, I'm not good at uh, building airplanes. I'm really not. They're not my forte. I, I, I can do okay with rockets and stuff, but yeah, as you can see, I moved the uh, the side fins up a little bit. So it's funky looking airplane, and it's called the Dart Mark One. Dart Mark One is our first airplane, and we're gonna have Valerina Kerman take this out for us. The first one we are having a lady fly our airplane. At first, no, I am not trying to be politically correct. I just wanted to use her because I never really used her. Uh, mostly utilized, you know, the first three, which I think is what everyone usually does. But anyways, put a little science on there. We're going to be able to get a temperature reading, atmosphere, um, atmosphere, uh, the barometer and uh, the impact thing. Uh, the gravit, gravit, gravitum, I learned words, gravimometer. <laughs> Not saying that right. And that's okay. Anyways, uh, this is our first test flight. We're going to go ahead and uh, give this a go. And hopefully not uh, do anything wrong to Valentina. Hopefully we'll be able to keep her alive. Uh, it's always risky. Again, we're not doing any um, reverting. We're not doing any test flights. Uh, so there's no like uh, testing stuff out before you actually fly it. Which is always high risk. But in this case, it looks like we're doing quite okay. Our design's pretty stable. Let's go ahead and get some... Uh, well, I guess we're not going to get any science out of this stuff because we've already gotten it around here. So we will have to wait on that until we get to our destination. As you look across the bay, you will see the island that we're headed to. Nice little inside view. The cockpits 
in these in this game are very pretty. They've done a lot since the game first originally came out. They are fantastic to look at. Um, I unfortunately can't fly in first person mode. I've never been able to, even with other games, never been able to. So yeah, we're just gonna stick to the third person, and we're gonna go ahead and head towards the uh, the small island, which everyone knows about. Uh, if you don't, yeah, you'll find out here in just a second. But there's a little runway and a tower there. They have added a few things there. I've never really explored it, which we're gonna do in this um, this episode in our test flight. We're just basically, you know, trying our trying our stuff out. As you can see, we're getting a little uh, little air um, ripples right there, kind of like we're getting close to breaking the sound barrier. So I had to throttle back a little bit. I didn't realize this thing with those little engines would uh, have so much power. Um, it's uh, kind of crazy, but I guess it is a very light airplane. It doesn't have any fuel except for what's connected to the engines themselves. So, I mean, and there's two little fuel tanks. So this thing could fly for a very long time and pretty fast. Uh, as far as how high it'll go, that is another subject. Uh, it doesn't really have a lot of air in tanks, so I don't foresee it going high very high anyways uh it's definitely got the distance i don't think it's got the height but the height the altitude uh in other words we'll uh we'll worry about that later right now we're more concerned with just seeing how stable this thing is if it can last long in flight which it, it very much seems like it can and if i'll be able to land it now one of the good things about those gear that i have on it is that they are quite forgiving and I'm going to need them to be quite forgiving. And you can pretty much land anywhere you want to, as long as it's not like into a mountainside. Uh, any any, any kind of semi-flat area, you're going to be able to, to land on. You don't necessarily need a runway. However, I, who suck at flying in this game, want to try and attempt and land on this runway. Uh, because this one is a smaller than the one at the, uh, at the base. And two... A lot bumpier so if I can land it here what well, the way I figure it in my in my brain pan upstairs is that I'll be able to land it pretty much anywhere uh, especially be able to return back to base so uh, coming in here for a landing it's lined up pretty good however if you notice my speed I'm going uh, 185 meters per second that is way too fast this thing doesn't have any parachutes on it or anything so no air brakes no parachutes not, nothing like that so I'm definitely gonna have to take another swing at this and uh, try and come in at a uh, slower speed if you will and again checking the science there's nothing there for me it's every I've grabbed everything with the rockets so this is you know not really a good science vessel However, it does seem to be a pretty damn good um, flying vessel. Uh, I think it flies pretty good. It looks a little funky with the wings being so far forward. I, I did notice a few things uh, while editing that I could do better to improve this aircraft and maybe make it fly a little bit better. And I'm going to attempt to, to make those changes in the uh, the next time we, we come back to this. It won't be... Um, it won't be in the next episode where we actually kind of do do some science with the uh, with the aircraft, but it, it, uh, the next time I go back to redesign it when I when I go build the uh, Mark II of this particular aircraft, I, I definitely have some ideas for some changes in mind, and I think one of them may actually be filling up the middle tank with gas just for the weight, even though you don't need it. I definitely won't need it, but I think about filling that up for just for just weight purposes. And also moving the engines themselves further backwards. Uh, that also would help move the mass more towards the rear of the airplane. Uh, things I'll toy with, again, not so important for this. This is, again, just a proof of concept. So we got her all lined up now, or we're trying to line her up and trying to stay above uh, where the, uh, the runway is. That's uh, kind of important. You don't want to come in too low. It's a little hard to judge where the, uh, the runway actually is. Uh, this, especially this far out with this, you know, as low as we are, I mean, I can kind of see it now, uh, which I apparently saw it in game cause I'm going to make some corrections, uh, but there's no like runway lights leading up to it. Anyone who's ever been to an airport, you know, coming in and coming into a runway, there's runway lights, uh, that actually go out. I actually know a little bit about this cause that's part of my, uh, work experience has been at the airports, basically what I do now. So, uh, 
Yeah, so interesting fact. Uh, there are lights on either side of the runway, depending on which way the wind is blowing, that will direct you to the runway. That is to prevent, help prevent people landing on a, an active taxiway. The light structure is actually different for a runway than it is on a taxiway. But if you kind of got fog and stuff like that, it gets really, really kind of tricky to tell. Uh, and I know people are like, oh, GPS and all that other stuff. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. I do not fly in real life. Terrified of it because I work with these people. And I know what happens on a daily basis. It's absolutely goddamn terrifying. But, uh, yeah, so the runway, there's actually a stretch of lights that come out in front of and behind the runway that light up that guide you to it. And uh, even without that, I did seem to make a pretty decent landing. It's not too shabby. We are able to get a little science here over on the ground because uh, this is its own biome. So, you know, that's good. We're at least not walking away without anything. You know, we actually got something. Um, one problem <laughs> you'll notice here in a second uh, with this design is that you saw how Valentina kind of got popped out, you know, just like poop. That is because the wings are so far forward, they're actually blocking the door. So, even though Valentina got out, she's not getting back in, y'all. So, we're going to have to recover this with the uh, the recovery in order to get that science and get back to, and get back to base. <laughs> uh, design flaws, you got to love them. This is how you learn, though, with KSP, guys. It's definitely, you have to go out there and you have to experiment with everything that you've got. If you go out there and, and uh, just look online and just build stuff from that you see online, you're not growing. You're just copying. Really, really, anyone who's interested in playing this game should definitely go out and experiment with it. Anyways, guys, that's going to take us to the end of our program today. I said that like I'm a TV show. Take us to the end of the show. Uh, thank you guys for watching. As always, I appreciate a like, a subscription, thumbs up, thumbs down, all those great groovy comments that you guys left in the last one. Please come back for more. This has been Zadian playing KSP. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you next time for more KSP.